and welcome. I'm Krista Gibson, the host of Keeping It Real, and my guest today is Reverend Judith Laxer. Hi, Judith. Hi, Krista. And we are continuing our series on the pagan holidays. Um, Judith is the priestess of Gaia's Temple in Seattle, and she's been leading us through the various pagan holidays. And now we're going to talk about, I have to look at my note, Lunasaw. And if I'm saying it wrong, she's going to correct me. So what is that holiday? I suspect this is one. I didn't know about it until you we were doing this series. So I suspect a lot yeah. of people don't. Yes, exactly. That is true. And, you know, it's interesting because most of the Sabbaths or the holy days on the pagan wheel of the year have somehow managed to come through into secular society. Yes. Except for Lunasa. For some reason, this one just got completely obscured. Mm -hmm. Although there are some church services for Lamas, which I'll talk about in a minute, right. um, she recognizes it. But, you know, we're all pretty much aware of the solstices and the equinoxes. You know, you'll even hear that about the news, right? And then these four cross quarter days that we're including this year in our season, in our um, series on the seasons. You know, a lot of people know about Beltane. Everybody knows about Halloween, you know. Even though it's become Groundhog Day and was originally Bridget, we also know about that. Right. But when it comes to August 1st or 2nd, nope. there's nothing. The only thing that we do have are that the farmer's markets are happening in a big, you know, in a big True. way right now. Yep. And that's because this is the first harvest on the wheel. So there are three harvest festivals on the wheel of the year. Luna says the first one, Mabin, which is the autumn equinox, is the second. And Samhain, which is Halloween in October, end of October, is the third. Mm -hmm. And this first one is the, har the first harvest, and it's the harvest of the grains. Now, if you are a gardener like me, you've been harvesting for a while. I've been eating... Right. You know, zucchini and patty pan squash and all kinds of herbs and radishes and lettuce and peas. I mean, there has been harvest before, but this is the first harvest of the grain. So at this time, the sun has been strong enough, long enough, hot enough for the grains to begin to ripen. And since the, you know, discovery and cultivation of agriculture, grains has been, well, we all know bread is that expression, the bread is the staff of life. Right. So this is a crucial, <clears throat> excuse me, a crucial part of our harvest. And so a great festival um, arrived for this. And, you know, the pagans who were living close to the land, they ritualized their celebrations in their connection to nature and to the earth. So that's kind of the premise of this uh, Sabbath, and it's specifically about the first harvest and the harvest of the grain. So the wheat, the barley, some of the early corn, all of this is starting to come in now, which can then be not only, you know, like corn can be now, but it can be dried, it can be grain, you know, um, threshed and uh, ground popcorn. into flour. <laughs> popcorn, exactly. And it can become flour, which can become bread, which is something that lasts longer than the herb, uh, than the grain itself. You know, so always looking ahead to how are we going to sustain ourselves. Right. Um, this was, you know, part of the importance of it. Now, it's called Lunasa because of the sun god, Lu, who's a Celtic god. And uh, he is one aspect of the divine masculine in pagan spirituality, the sun king. And, of course, you know, we revolve around the sun, right? And we need that bright star in the center of our galaxy in order to survive and also the seasons that he brings about and the sunlight is what makes everything grow mm -hmm. and if things don't grow we can't eat we can't survive so you know in a in a time when we just go to the grocery store and pick up a loaf of bread and don't think anything about it mm -hmm. it really is an interesting holiday to kind of pause and really look at how did that loaf get made right you know because, I mean, even if we go to bake our own bread, we're going to go to the store and buy the flour. Mm -hmm. But really, how does that happen from beginning to end? So I want to talk a little bit about that because um, it's in a way the <coughs> excuse me the progression <coughs> excuse me the progression from the grain growing in the field to the loaf of bread on the table is not only magnificent, but it's also a metaphor for ways that we can look to live our lives, mm -hmm. to be careful about how things go in our lives, and also it helps us to figure out how we want to ritualize and celebrate this 
um, this celebration. So on the pagan wheel of the year, Lunasa, actually the cross-quarter days, all the cross-quarter days begin the seasons. I think I talked about this earlier. So that, you know, summer began at Beltane, and then at Letha, the summer solstice, that was the peak of summer. Mm -hmm. So now autumn actually begins on August 1st, and it peaks at the equinox. Just as Samhain will begin the winter, that peaks at Yule, and then Imbolc will begin the spring, that peaks at the um, Aostara, at the spring equinox. So when you follow the pagan wheel of the year, you're actually jumping back about six weeks to understand when the seasons begin. Which is really disconcerting for a lot of people because here we are in the heat. I mean, it's been hot here in Seattle. I know it's been hot all over the country. Yeah. It's hard to think of this as the beginning of autumn, right. you know. Um, <laughs> think of autumn in terms of harvest and the beginning of fruition, mm -hmm. then it starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so, here we are at the beginning of autumn. And if you notice now, uh, the twilight is starting to look a little bit more syrupy, you know, it's starting to look a little bit more autumn-like when it comes to, sun, uh, come to twilight of the year. And that is a very different twilight than at the peak of summer where it's still bright, bright, bright. But now we start to notice the light is changing. And it's, I've mentioned this before too, how important it is to stay in touch with the length of light of the day rather than the temperature, especially in our era of climate change. So anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting tangential. I'll pull it back. <laughs> so here we are at the first harvest and the beginning of August and the beginning of the autumn. So I'm just checking my notes here so I can stick with it. So at the at across the pagan wheel of the year at Imbolc, which is February first, that's when we begin to bless and plant seeds. Right. right? right. Now across the wheel at its opposite time, this is when we begin the harvest. And we know that when we're harvesting, essentially what we're doing is giving death. Like when we pull that apple off the tree we're kind of giving death to the apple. Right, now, it's right. feed us so that we can grow, but eventually we will die and right, hopefully right. we will return to the earth and, um, you know, nourish what comes next. Mm -hmm. And so when we get to Lanasa, we're really starting to look at that life cycle and we're contemplating mortality for the first time on the wheel. Up until now, it's been the birth of the sun and the growth and the fruition and gestation of seeds. Now, as we start to harvest, think of that, you know, grim reaper, right? He has a sickle. When he goes out to harvest that grain, he's using his sickle, so he's giving death to the grain. Right. So, uh, sort of philosophically, the sun god is now sacrificing himself in life's cause. So the sun is pouring down on the land. <clears throat> the land is growing all the food. We start to harvest it. And so he dies in order for us to live. And this is like part of that life cycle. Mm -hmm. So when we approach it that way, it has a much deeper, more profound meaning mm -hmm. than just going to the grocery store and buying a loaf of bread. Like I said, there's like way more to it when you think of it philosophically that way and spiritually that way. Mm -hmm. but Actual making of bread from grain to bread is really quite a fascinating process that most of us know nothing about. And so I want to talk about the different aspects of that because that can really inform how we might celebrate this holiday. Okay. So first, it is, um, you know, the, the side comes in, we harvest the grain. Then what we have to do is we have to thresh the grain. Right. And by threshing it, we are separating the wheat from the chaff, right? We want to get those kernels of wheat out from the rest of it. And threshing is done, um, well, the, the, the grain is in a hard shell. And so it kind of has to be like beaten in order to uh, break that chaff away to get the wheat. So this is accomplished by pounding a bundle of grain um, that's laid out on something that was called the threshing floor. And this is where we get the expression of the threshold. Mm -hmm. The threshold between a portal would keep all the grain from spilling out. It was like a little, well, it's like a threshold. It's like a little bump. And so the grain wouldn't get away. Mm -hmm. And so we would just break down this, uh, this grain on the ground and then collect it. Now, it's still filled with straw and all kinds of plant material. So the next thing that needs to happen is winnowing. And winnowing is when you take the grain in a big old basket 
and you toss it up in the air and let the wind take the straw away and the grains fall into the basket. So now we're utilizing the element of air to help separate until we have nothing but the grain. And then after that grain is uh, winnowed, then we ground it. Now we have to grind it down till it becomes a flour or, you know, some sort of a flour material um, based on whatever that is, corn flour, wheat flour, rye flour, barley flour, and then it can be baked into bread. And even that is fascinating. Like I just often wonder, now who looked at that grain growing there and says, hey, that looks like it would make a great loaf of bread one day. Let's cut it down and then beat it up and uh-huh. then collect the pieces and whittle them and, and then ground it down. And then, hey, let's take some yeast. I don't know where we're going to find it, but let's take some yeast and we'll mix it in and we'll pound it in. We'll let it rise. We'll pound it down again and then we'll form a loaf and bake it. Like, that is a mystery still to me. Yeah, who, who came up with that? I know. I mean, I can only imagine that the great grain goddess Demeter actually came down and said, this is how you right. do it. <laughs> um, but it still is a mystery. And then, But anyway, so then we get the flour, and then the flour is baked into bread. Hmm. So we can see how it goes from the field to the table. And, you know, so many of these pagan holidays, because they are connected to nature and connected to the earth, are so much about plant life around us Mm -hmm. and how that nature uh, nurtures and sustains us so we can look at this process also in our own lives and say what need what are we harvesting in our life now like across the wheel we were planting seeds and at the time I said you know be mindful what are those seeds going to represent what are you going to grow what are they metaphoric of you know so now like are you starting to harvest from that what is coming to you from the work that you've done planting those seeds. So we can take a look at that in the harvest, and then we can also contemplate that in order to really have the joy and the beauty of the harvest, we must give death. And so we start to contemplate death on the life cycle, Mm -hmm. not as the ending, but as the next step, right? And so we can take a look at ourselves and see, what do I need to give death to? What's going on with me or in me? that is past fruition and no longer serves, that I need to take out my big old scythe and cut away. And then how am I going to thresh it? How am I going to separate the wheat from the chaff so I get the good stuff out of that and the rest that doesn't serve, I can compost in another way, Mm -hmm. right? right? And then, you know, how am I going to transform that into something that actually nourishes? You know, that could be the grinding of grain. Mm-hmm. And then once I have that flour, what am I going to make it into? You know? So these are really, I think when we start to get to the darker half of the year, which is rapidly approaching, the next Sabbath is going to be the autumn equinox, and that's when we go into the dark half of the year. Even though it's still sunny late now, the days are growing visibly shorter. Right. And as we go into the dark half of the year, we contemplate those deeper mysteries a little bit more right. about harvest and about death and about how important that is on the life cycle in order for life to continue. So that kind of brings me back to Lou the Sun King now. So he is he is sacrificing himself in life's cause. He is pouring his full um, energy and life force of the sun down onto the earth uh, in order for all of us to maintain being alive. So he sacrifices himself. And what that does is it makes us take a look at the word sacrifice, really. And really what that means is something that's given up for the sacred. So his sacred purpose is to offer his life force that others may live. And that truly is a sacred purpose. You know, there's so much propaganda about paganism for so long, and so you want to, you know, so many people are so, so many pagans are nervous about putting the word sacrifice and pagan together right. because it brings up all those nasty images that are just not true. Right. At this point on the wheel of the year, we do contemplate sacrifice in order for you know, for the greater good. Right. And so that's a really beautiful spiritual question to ask ourselves at this time. What am I sacrificing? What must I sacrifice? What can I give up in order for something bigger, grander, beyond myself right. to be able to continue? Right. And I 
that's a beautiful spiritual question to ponder, mm-hmm. you know, because we're living in a culture that says me first mm-hmm. and right. you know, I'm the only one that matters and, uh, you know, it's all immediate right. gratification. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So when we come to this point on the wheel of the year, we start to ponder who we are in the bigger scheme of things. I think that's what happens as we mature anyway, right? You know, we are, our egos mature a little bit more. We realize we're not the only one in the room. We're the only one that matters. We start to connect to life in a grander way. And so every year at NASA, we get a chance to contemplate these deeper mysteries in a really beautiful and spiritual way. So the baking of bread is a beautiful ritual to do at this time of year or on uh, August 1st. I think it's August 1st this year. That we know. So also baking bread and sharing it with your beloveds is a very, you know, mm-hmm. simple, beautiful ritual to do. Mm-hmm. And even the church, that's what I started to say before, the church called this uh, celebration Lamas, which is Latin for loaf mass. And so they were also celebrating, you know, bread, the staff of life. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah, quite a beautiful thing. Let me see if there was anything else that I wanted to say here. No, I think I I covered that as far as how, you know, bread is made. And something that just came to mind that this isn't pagan, it's Jewish. But uh, I have a Jewish friend, and we were talking about how on Fridays they make um, challah. Challah. Challah? Hala. Yeah, Hala. And uh, anyway, that one of the things that she and some of her friends do is when they make one, they make it in honor of someone or oh, in yeah. honor of an issue. And so I'm thinking, you know, another way to add to this celebration, if you're going to bake a loaf of bread or make a loaf of bread, is to dedicate that, whether it's to something in your own life or much bigger, you know, do it in honor of a person or an issue or the healing of some of the political rifts that are going on. So I just oh, wanted to mention that because I thought, oh, what a nice way to bring that together that is from a, another tradition. That's a beautiful tradition. Yeah. 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 So that's my, awesome. In my circle, what we used to do was we, um, what we do, what we still do to this day, is we'll get a sheaf of wheat, you know, from somewhere. And I have um, several friends who have chickens, and so the chicken feed somehow just somehow manages to grow wheat in their yard, yes, in their yard. Yeah. <laughs> Take a little bit of that wheat, and we'll tie it together, and that will represent the harvest, and it'll represent the sun king. And then we'll burn it in a fire pit as kind of a metaphor of him going into the oven, you know, right. in a way. Yeah. Um, but also this great transformation that takes place with the harvest. Right. And um, then we'll have a loaf of bread that we have baked uh, right by it. So once that uh, wheat burns down to ashes, then voila, we right. have bread and this That's great transformation. Of and we have in the past uh, shaped the bread in the shape of a man, uh-huh. you know, with sunking arms. And, <laughs> Fun. and then we get to partake of Lou. And I believe that that is where the original communion came from. Probably, probably. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Now, are you doing something in Seattle? Usually when there's one of these holidays, are you doing something for this? Our Gaia's Temple is hosting a Lunasa uh, ritual on August 1st. That's a Thursday night this year okay. at 7 o'clock. And it's going to be uh, at Meridian Park, which is behind the Good Shepherd Center in Wallingford. Right. You can go to our website and find out about the event there. It's all listed there. We always do a potluck celebration afterwards. And it's just a beautiful community gathering to to mark these auspicious Earth holidays, you know, so that you kind of anchor your experience, your spiritual experience of going through the seasons in community, in beautiful ritual. Right. So, yeah. Great. And then if people want to contact you, because um, I know you do – sessions and counseling and tarot and all kinds of great things yeah uh, people yes. can find you online yes uh-huh. my website is judithlaxer.com and you can contact me through there or judith at judithlaxer.com is my email and you can contact me that way or my telephone number is 206-529-8085 so if you want to book an, a private appointment with me that's the way to go about it Perfect. Well, thank you so much. As usual, it's been fascinating, and I so appreciate learning 
learning more about these different holidays. Like you say, some we knew, but like this one, I didn't have a clue. So now I do. And I'll be breaking bread on August 1st, I think. Exactly, exactly. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm really enjoying the series too. I really look forward to it. Thank Great. you. Awesome. I'll see you next time now. Take care. Bye. Bye.